hope you enjoyed the video um so i've been in peru for a week now like one full week today's tuesday i left on last monday got to peru on tuesday spent three days in lima and it was like pure culture shock like just like yeah it was really fun i stayed in um a hostel and i was basically like by myself the whole time um, and then some other people came uh, last night and staying there and then I explored like Miraflores, Barranco um, and then I went to the zoo and um, let's see what else did I do that was mostly I explored <laughs> some restaurants the first time I went to a restaurant though I totally chickened out because like my Spanish was just like I didn't even know what to do um, and I just like walked in and I was like freaked out and asked for the bathroom instead of something to eat. <laughs> and then I left Lima and took the bus up to Trujillo. It was like nine hour night bus. So I went and left at like 1030 at night and slept in the VIP section of the bus. And let me tell you, like the buses here 
way nicer. Like the long distance buses are way nicer than um, the buses at home. Like two stories, the VIPs like recline like all the way down where you can sleep. They have like screens where you can like watch TV and like get on the internet. So then I got to Trujillo and um, David was an hour late picking me up. So David is the uh, director and founder of the school that I'm um, volunteering at here. So I was like, oh my gosh, am I going to be stranded in the middle of the city? I, I can't speak the language very well. I'm just like, I'm like, I'll just get on a bus and go back and fly back to the United States. I was freaking out. Um, but then he came and picked me up, got a taxi, came here. And then got my room, and then the next day, well, then I went to the market. Uh, you'll see some pictures that I post on the blog of the market. Um, that's like the biggest market in Peru. It's huge, it's like as everything that you can think of. Um, so I've been here for like three days um, on my own, and today two more volunteers from America just came, and then tomorrow another girl's coming. I'll be sharing a room with her here. Um, and I taught for the last two days, um, we had to take a combi bus, which is like pretty much a van and they stuff like as many people in there as they can and it's only one soul, um, and three souls is one dollar in the United States, so pretty cheap. And we get there and, um, it's just like, I mean, just like slum, basically, and, um, you know, all these kids, like, they deserve better than that. But that's why we're teaching them English. Um, first day was kind of hard because I don't speak any Spanish at all. Like, I mean, I speak, like, a little bit, enough to, like, get by. Um, and they, like, kept asking me questions in Spanish. I was like, I don't know, I'm just trying to teach English. Um, you can probably hear. It's pretty loud in here. Um... I have lots of roommates. My host is Carmen. Um, she's an old lady. She's David's aunt. Um, yeah. Oh, on the way back from the market, I saw like a whole street of just like shoes. The shoe market, just all shoes. So that's like a really good sign. I haven't started started exploring that a lot yet. I'm still trying to get situated here and figure out what my schedule is going to be so I have enough time to um, go go do that. Um, and then actually like just two doors down from here, there's a, a cobbler um, who repairs shoes. So once I get my Spanish um, gets good enough, I'll go over there and talk to him. But probably not for like a month because my Spanish isn't is anywhere where I'd be comfortable enough talking to shoemakers right now. So I'm sure none of them speak any English at all. Um, I've gone to Huanchaco Beach three times. Um, and it's awesome. It's like 20 minutes, 30 minutes away. Um, it's like touristy beach. You can surf, hang out, play volleyball, frisbee, soccer. Um, lots of people go dancing in the clubs. Oh, the night I got here, or the day I got here, we went to Manchaco for a bonfire, and then, <laughs> and then stayed out and like didn't get back until like three in the morning, and I was like so tired from traveling. I'm like, oh my god, I just want to go to bed, and um, we just stay up really late here on the weekends. So we'll see how adjusting is. The other hard part of adjusting for me has been food. And it's like the food is really good, um, but just figuring out what has gluten in it and what doesn't has been interesting. Um, usually it's fine, like, but no fried chicken and that kind of thing, which is pretty popular. Um, and then, like, so they just, like, eat at strange times, so I'm just trying to figure out, like, what time I should eat. Um... And then, like, always have snacks on me because sometimes, like, don't eat lunch until late. And, like, I freak out if I don't eat. So I have, like, a lot of snacks with me all the time so I can snack and I don't get hangry. Because <laughs> um, I was pretty hangry, like, the first two days I was here. I was like, oh, my God, I'm so hungry. Um, yep, I'm learning Spanish every day, little by little. Um, it's been good. Transitions, 
culture shock. Not being able to understand people. A lot of difficulties, but met a lot of really, really nice people. Already made a couple friends um, that want to do language exchanges with me. So I'll teach them English. They teach me Spanish. We go out, have some coffee or whatever, and learn learning languages. So yeah, it's um, been a long week, and I'm like really eager to get started with my projects and like what I want to learn about but at the same time I'm like I'm here for 10 months I need to just take some time before and learn the language before I can do that so yeah um it's week one blog I probably won't blog every week maybe every two weeks um but yeah I'll keep you guys posted ciao